Hi everyone, just a quick video on mechanical distributors, so mechanical ignition systems. So these were used up, up until the 90s really. Uh, I think the youngest car I've seen is 2001 with it on. Uh, obviously this has all been replaced by the coil pack now, but if you've got classic cars, uh, you're working on older cars that's still out and about on the roads, then obviously you may, un uh, may want to know how they work. So we'll go through the major parts, the components, what they do, and then this old training rig, I think from the 1980s, uh, you can put power onto it and make it run so we can see how it actually operates um, on this training rig. So the main component, obviously, we've got the uh, ignition coil, we've got the mechanical distributor itself, and then we've obviously got the spark plugs which uh, lead off from that. So the mechanical distributor itself, if you followed it down into here, there'd be a long shaft or a long cam, and at the bottom of the cam, there'd be some curved gears that would lock onto the uh, camshaft on the engine. So this would spin round, so the faster the engine RPM is, the faster the engine's spinning, the faster the distributor would spin and therefore deliver sparks quicker. So we'll start from this side. So we've got the ignition coil here. So on the outer uh, outside of the coil, we've got the primary winding and then inside we've got the secondary winding. winding. I'll come back to that, but uh, electromagnetic field collapses and it sends a big power surge through the high tension lead from the secondary coil uh, to the top of the distributor cap here to the central core. So if I pop off these clips here and I'll show you inside, what you'll see is there's a spring-loaded brush here uh, and that touches the top of the rotary arm here, which is spinning with the engine. Um, there is four, normally four, this is obviously a cutaway, so there's only three left on here, one's been chopped away, but there's normally four contacts for a four-cylinder engine. On the inside of each of those cylinders, hopefully you can see there's a little metal contact there. So as the rotary arm spins around, the electricity is coming down here onto the rotary arm. As the rotary arm goes past this contact, the spark jumps across and then the HT leads, as we know them, will then lead on to the corresponding spark plug. I mean, the whole idea of a distributor is to deliver the right spark to the right cylinder at the right time. So let's pop that back on there. One there. And one at the back. So within the uh, distributor, obviously the, the faster it spins the engine, the faster the distributor spins, which in theory is great. But it's not quite ideal because obviously if you're in, at low speed and you press the accelerator hard, uh, then there may be a delay until the RPM builds up. So there's a couple of things uh, which help with that. So down here, we've got some spring-loaded um, weights, which is, use a centrifugal force, so spinning force. So as the engine speeds up, those weights uh, come out and it actually spins the cam. So it actually makes the distributor fire slightly earlier. The faster the engine's going means the faster the pistons are going. So as the piston's coming up the cylinder faster and faster, the spark needs to go off earlier and earlier to be able to hit it square in the face when the piston's at top dead centre. If there was no advanced, which is what we call it, distributor advance, then the spark would be too late to meet the piston and the piston would already be travelling back down as the spark plug's firing off behind it. So it needs to hit the piston square in the face. So by having this centrifugal force system as it spins round, it twists the whole cam and therefore the spark goes off slightly earlier so we still get uh, the perfect burn. Uh, another way of doing that is this mechanical uh, vacuum advance. So when you press the accelerator and the butterfly valve goes from closed to open, it sends some engine pressure into here, which also advances the uh, mechanical uh, mechanical advance. So you've got a centrifugal system and an engine vacuum system. You can get them one or the other, or in this case, you can get both. So last thing to show here before we fire it up is the uh, contact breaker here. So as the, as the camshaft spins around, this contact breaker will open and close, like so, and that will break the uh, electronic circuit to this uh, primary uh, winding, which will then create the power surge. As the magnetic field collapses on the primary, it creates a power surge out of the secondary, and that's how it delivers high voltage. As the box says, up to 25,000 volts. Commonly, it's 15 to 20,000 volts on a spark ignition engine. And the only other one I'll mention is the condenser, the condenser is there to clean up the electronic, um, the spark. So if the condenser wasn't there, the spark would be dirtier. It would create more pitting and marking and burning on the contacts inside here. So the condenser is there to, to clean up the spark uh, and make sure it's a nice connection. So what I'll do then, I'll turn on the power and then we'll see this rotary arm spinning around in this housing, hitting those contacts and delivering a spark, which will then jump across, run down the high, high tension leads uh, all the way to the spark plug. So here we go, let's turn it on. So hopefully with that, you can see 
as it jumps, obviously it's arcing onto the casing because there is one missing. You can see the rotor arm spinning around, taking the high voltage, and then it's touching the contact with the spark plug, and then it's sending the electricity down to the spark plug, which would then fire and obviously burn the fuel air mixture uh, in the cylinder. As I say, with the increase in RPM, the uh, mechanical advance would twist that distributor slightly earlier so it fires slightly earlier to get the perfect burn. Hopefully that makes sense and uh, we'll see you in the next one.